Alright, today's video is about how to use Google Photos. If you're not familiar with Google Photos, it's a free service where Google will take all of your photos and upload them into the cloud. They're saved to your private Google account. You can share them with other people if you'd like, but you don't have to. The nice thing is that this is going to free up a lot of space on your hard drive, or more importantly, from your phone. Um, and Google Photos has an app that's specifically designed to back up your photos from your phone, and then you can remove them from your phone so they don't take up that storage space anymore. So I'm going to show you how this works here. So open up the Google Photos app, and Google Photos will show you all of the most recent photos you've taken. So here's me trying to perfect this selfie. And you can see there's uh, two arrow icons pointing at each other right here. And that means these photos have not been uploaded yet. Uh, but as we scroll down a little bit further, you're going to start to see that some of the photos that I have in here have already been uploaded. So like when we get to these photos, there is no arrows because those are already uploaded. So you can always tell if a photo is uploading because it will have that little spinning icon. Uh, as you can see on these ones here. And then once it uh, uploads, you'll see the check mark on that photo like we saw there. And so by default, Google Photos only backs up your photos over Wi-Fi so that it doesn't use a bunch of your data and it doesn't slow things down. Uh, you can change that in the settings if you'd like. But when you download the app, just go ahead and let it do all of the permissions. The default settings are going to work best for most people. Um, and you can see here that it's actually uploading all of the uh, photos that I've taken so that they're stored online. So then once you're done with that, you can go over to the assistant. And the assistant is really helpful because it will show you what's going on. So you can see that it's backing up my photos, that I have 17 items left. The first time that you do this, it's going to back up all of the photos from your phone so there could be a few thousand if you're like my sister-in-law or my wife or her mother. Our whole family takes a lot of photos. Um, but once the initial upload is done, then it's only going to need to upload any new photos that you've taken. So the initial upload could take a little while, but once that's completed, it's pretty quick every time you connect to Wi-Fi. Um, Google is always going to hound you to try to get you to rate their app. Um, so you can do that if you're into rating on the App Store. Um, and then it will probably give you a notification, your phone's almost out of space. You can free up space by removing photos from this device that are already safely backed up. Um, so I've had people ask me, how can I know for sure that my photos are backed up? And you can do that by going to uh, photos.google.com. It's going to have you log in. Uh, but when you refresh this page, you'll be able to see which photos are actually uploaded to Google Photos in the cloud. So I click refresh there and I can now see all of those photos that I just uploaded, uh, which is really helpful because now I know for sure, okay, those are in the cloud. I don't need to keep them on my phone anymore. Um, and then if I scroll back up, it says that I've got eight items left here. So I'll go ahead and let that count down. Um, and once we're done, we can go on. Shared albums gives you the option to create a photo album and then share it with specific people. Uh, so if you had, for instance, a set of birthday photos where you had 20 friends come over, you could share that album with just those 20 people in that shared albums feature. Um, and so that's kind of neat if you really want to share all those photos to a specific group of people and not publicly for everyone to see like you would on Facebook. Um, then there's this rediscover the day feature and that's just going to pull up, um, oh man, apparently, hmm, my screen went away. Maybe we'll get it back. Ha <laughs> ha, okay technical difficulties. So rediscover the day is just picking uh, a day in the past, either today or a few days ago, and it's going to pull up all of your photos that you took on that specific day. So this is very similar to like when you log in on Facebook and it pops up and says, oh, you've been friends with so-and-so for seven years. Um, it's presenting something so that you can remember it. So here, rediscover the day. 
Um, I can see all these photos that we took at a wedding for my friends and they just celebrated their one year anniversary. Crazy to think that it's been a year already, um, but this is kind of a neat feature. Now when you're on the assistant, anytime you don't want to see any something anymore, you can just swipe it to the right and it will go away. So you can see down there below, I swipe to the right. Go ahead and swipe this to the right. And that's going to take all of those out of your assistant bar here. Um, so we've got five photos left. I'm gonna get rid of that card. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and click free up space. So it's telling me right now that I have five photos on my phone that have already been backed up to the cloud. So I don't need to keep those on my phone any longer. I can just go ahead and hit delete. It's gonna prompt me again and make sure, do I wanna delete these from my phone? Um, so you, it's really hard to get to the point where you've actually deleted something by accident. And that's they've designed it that way so that you're not accidentally deleting things. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete those because I already have them backed up to the cloud. And when I go to my photos, so all of these photos have been recently backed up to the cloud. And if I look at them in the Google Photos app, I have the option to uh, delete the device original from this screen here. And then I also have the option to share the photo. Um, and if I go over here, you can see all the different options for like how to share it and how to copy it. And then you can also tweet it and message it and all of those kind of things. So one of the most common things that you do with photos, that I do with photos at least, is I'll send them through a message. So this is what it looks like. It still adds it to Messenger, just like if, if you had shared it from the native photos app on the iPhone. Okay, so then once all of these are uploaded, go ahead and refresh again here. All right, so on the desktop version of Google Photos, you can see under Assistant um, some of those similar cards, and they're just obviously made a lot bigger for the bigger screen. And then you can also go to Albums, and Albums will show you any photo albums that you've created. And then it's also going to create albums for you. And it does a facial recognition to grab people's uh, photos that have the same face. Uh, so if I go to people here, it's gonna show me all these different people. Um, and then I can just pick out who those people are and it's actually gonna create a, a little album with all of the photos of that person. Um, so that's kind of fun. So if I click on my brother's face here, I can see all these different photos that we've been tagged in together. And we're not actually tagged in these. I'm sorry, that's the wrong language. These are just photos that Google recognized his face um, in each of these different photos and pulled them together. And then it's asking me to label who this is. Um, it's private and it's really just for your fun. Um, but it can be neat to have Google pull all of that information, especially if you're uploading multiple years worth of albums. Um, because oftentimes there's events that you take photos at that you forget about and it can be cool to remember those um, the events that you had with that person. It's going to pull together some other things too, shared photos, places that you've been. Uh, so places is kind of interesting. It's actually going to show you all of the uh, photos that you took at a specific place. So for instance, Hawkinson, this is where my parents live. Uh, you know, I took some photos while I was home there. <laughs> and uh, so we can go ahead and see all of the photos we took there. Um, or Arizona, for instance, you know, it's taking the location tag on those photos and it's using that to group them all together. Uh, so this is stuff that you, it would take you a long time to do with traditional photos that are printed, um, you know, to pull them all into albums or to sort them by the people that are involved. But you can do it very quickly from the Google Photos uh, storage space. And the cool thing is that as long as you use the, uh, the recommended storage size, there is unlimited storage. So Google Photos gives you a nice high quality photo uh, to store and they'll let you store all of your photos on here. Unlimited storage, completely free. You also have the option of doing full resolution, but unless you're a photographer and you're saving gigantic size photos or raw images, 
then you probably don't need the full resolution. Um, the social sharing, embedding on websites, even printing um, smaller prints of these photos will be totally fine with the size they get stored in. But if you are using this as your solution for photography, then I would recommend doing the original size and you can buy storage there if you go over the initial 15 gigabytes that they give you. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, go ahead and download the Google Photos app and upload all of your photos to the cloud and videos so that you can free up space on your phone. And they're always going to be there for you to access later. Um, and again, they, by default, they're uploaded to a private setting. And then if you want to share them, you totally can. Um, you just click the share icon here and you can create a new shared album. You can add it to an existing shared album. You can get a link share it to social media, whatever you want to do there. So guys, thanks for watching this video. If you have any other questions about how Google Photos works, leave a question in the comments or shoot me an email and I'd be happy to help.